What we're doing now is after a long time, we're entering in our second phase of flight testing. So very shortly after you do all the work here today, this vehicle is going to go off to California where it will do its flight test. So it's going to be brought up to an altitude, it's going to be dropped, and it's going to fly itself and going to land. What's pretty special about this is that it was a homegrown product. We've been here in Colorado. This vehicle was assembled here in Colorado, as you saw in the building that you probably drove by and didn't even know that there was a space shuttle being built in. I think that's one of the fun things about being here in Colorado. But it's truly a Colorado project because it has elements of very big companies like Lockheed and United and Launch Alliance and, and very small companies, women-owned businesses, the University of Colorado. We have over 50 peop uh, young people who have come out of universities in Colorado who have worked on this program over time. It will be the first of uh, several different variants of vehicles that we will do. The first being a cargo ship that essentially will be an autonomous vehicle that will take cargo up about 5,000 kilograms of cargo up to the space station and return back from the space station. All that really critical infrastructure, experiments, and things that are really important for us to be able to bring back home. The vehicle, as you see, looks like a plane and acts like a plane, meaning that it lands on a runway. It can land on any runway that, that is the same size as the 737, and we will designate certain runways around the country to, to do so. It will launch uh, out of Florida, out of the Kennedy Space Center, on board, the initial flight will be on board an Atlas V rocket, which is from the United Launch Alliance here in Colorado. The structure, the, the internal core of the vehicle is being built by Lockheed Martin, and it's really just a, a terrific partnership of companies and organizations and people throughout the state. We're quite fortunate to be in this position after all these years, and it's just so exciting to be able to think that you're, you're leading the next generation of space. And We at Sierra Nevada have been doing this for, for a while. We've been on over 430 missions and those missions have taken us as far away as Pluto and beyond. We've been to seven planets, we've been to Mars now over ten times, including most recently on the Curiosity program, and we've been to the Sun and the Moon, and we're on several really interesting programs going forward, including our return to Mars in 2020. Our uh, Dream Chaser team has been working long and hard on this, um, and uh, we're here today to kind of celebrate that. Uh, later today we're going to uh, invite in some friends and family of the, uh, of the folks that are working on this uh, program to take a look at the vehicle. Getting ready to ship it here uh, very shortly uh, out to Edwards Air Force Base uh, with uh, um, Armstrong Research Center, NASA Armstrong Research Center, to uh, basically do workups to flight test. And so we're gonna do an atmos atmospheric flight test, which will be the first step uh, in development of our, uh, actually the second time of flight testing, but the first step in the development of the vehicle uh, to go to orbit and, uh, and do provide uh, cargo transportation services for the space station. So again, we're excited to be here, excited to represent the team that's worked long, long and hard hours and many, many hours to come to make this, this a reality.